Hi, this is Jeff West with Oracle, and you may have seen some of the demos that we've done on YouTube for the some different JMS features. And I wanted to give you an overview of the code and project structure that you will find on samplecode.oracle.com for that has the code examples for these uh, for these demos. So first I want to take a look into the samples directory and you'll see that there's a JMS package directory there. Um, there's two batch files here that I use. Uh, the setup domain batch file sets up the two domains that I've used so far in my examples which are the AppGrid domain and the SAF or store and forward domain. And then you'll see batch files for the different examples that I'm going that I run or give a demo of. So what I've done is under domains, there is uh, an AppGrid and Storm and SAF domain directory, and then under here there is a listener that's there by default. So it's just a base listener listening on the on the default queue for the examples, and there's WLST that configures the domains from scratch. So let's take a quick look at that. Um, here I'm specifying a domain name dra domain directory um, and then what I'm doing is using the default template that comes with WebLogic 10.3.4 to create a domain and specifying the domain directory which is user projects domain app grid domain. Then this is going through setting some of the default options then here I'm using the node manager to connecting to the node manager and then using the node manager to automatically start the server. And then I'm connecting to the server and then setting some of the, my, my parameters. So I'm creating a cluster. I am creating two servers, creating the mach machine definition for the node manager and setting up my managed servers and then creating a JDBC system resource, creating JDBC stores for my JMS server, creating my two JMS servers, and then creating the, the base module that just has a connection factory queue and topic in it. And then uh, we activate the code, um, shut down the server, and restart the server so it's ready to go, and then I can start my managed servers. So uh, I'll cut to an, a quick example of how, uh, where we can see that in action. So here, what I want to show you is under the domains directory, uh, the domains don't exist yet. And what I'm doing is running setup domain and specifying after domain on the left and the SAF domain on the right. And what this will do is, so you see the directories are just created. Um, so what it's doing is going through and using the default WLS template that comes with WebLogic and creating a domain, specifying the domain name and domain path, and then configuring each domain with the base settings, uh, which is a just a base queue, uh, base JMS module with a connection factory queue and topic. So here uh, I'm starting the admin server and then I'll connect to it and run the configuration and then after the server is uh, after we've completed the configuration I'll restart the admin server so then when I start my managed servers they can connect and the configuration is up to date and um, then we can start running the examples so it looks like the SAF domain is winning So here, now it's restarting the admin server. Okay, so now on the right side, we see for the SAF domain, it's starting to deploy the SAF domain listener which is the default listener for that domain. And then over on the left, we have the AppGrid domain listener, which is just the base JMS listener. Next, let's take a look at the source files that are included. I've got a few different packages here, 
and um, it's not using the lovely Maven framework. Um, I'm using, I got started with IntelliJ a long time ago, and I have been using it ever since. Um, and I prefer that over Eclipse at this point, but that's just my personal preference. So I have the IntelliJ files checked in, and uh, then we'll have a source directory with our source code under there. So let's switch over to IntelliJ and I'll show you, uh, walk you through some of the packages that we have here. So the JMS receiver package is just a default um, listener. And all it does is accept a message and prints it out on the screen. For the example, I'm using text messages primarily because it's just for the ease of demonstration, but there's, you don't have to use text messages for any of the features that we cover. Um, also, there's a disclaimer you'll see at the top of every source code uh, file. The code here is for example only. Um, we're not liable if you choose to use this for any reason whatsoever, um, including but not limited to its, an, its use of, as an example for uh, these demonstrations. So um, I've got, for this example, this base listener bean, um, I have an EJB jar where I'm specifying uh, that it's listening to a queue, so standard stuff. And then I've got the WebLogic EJB jar where I'm specifying the JNDI name of the queue that it's listening to. Um, and I'm also set, limiting it to one bean per managed server. Uh, so that way it um, makes it easier to show some features in the example. Um, so I've got the storm forward forwarder uh, class here I use this in the storm forward example uh, what this does is it just takes a message off of the queue that it's listening to and forwards it using the connection factory uh, the storm forward connection factory and the imported storm forward queue so there's a few different uh, examples I have here the unit of work listener unit of order listener, and then I've got my sender classes. And here I have, um, for, for each example, I've got a different class that kind of uh, goes through and I can pass in different command line parameters to show different features. So, um, and you'll see some of this in my, in my previous demos where I can pass a normal, discrete, or parallel for unit of order and then send different message, different types of units of order or message batches. There's two classes in here. There's a simple JMS producer that uses all standard Java classes. And then I have the WebLogic JMS producer, which uses WebLogic specific classes in order to send messages. Now I'd like to give you an overview of an ant script framework that I used for deployment that's been, it's pretty flexible um, and I've been successful with it in the past. So the main ant script is deploy.xml. And let's take a, a walk through of this, um, this project. So uh, I import a few properties files, uh, create a timestamp, and I'm using ant contrib. Uh, it's a good library with some extra ant tasks in it. Um, it's not included in the distribution, so that's something that you would have to download um, and either include in your um, ant directory or update this path to the ant contrib jar file. So when we go through this, this is designed to take an environment name and an application name. Um, and then do the rest for you. So you don't have to specify um, listen port, username, password, all of those things are properties driven. So let's take a look at some of the properties. So here, this is the domain properties file. There's some features in here that I haven't used in all of the scripts, but here you specify a domain and an environment name and then a series of properties after that. 
So here I'm saying the, the path to this domain is here. Then I specify the host port username and password for this ad for this domain for this uh, environment. And then we can specify multiple domains here. Or if I wanted to, I could also take this and make this example two. And then when I specify example two, um, it would then take the settings for the new, uh, for the different environment. The way that you would use this is to have dev environment, test environment, or and or staging environment specified in your properties file. And then you can use the same deployment framework to deploy to multiple environments. Next, let's take a look at the application properties. So here, uh, I'm specifying, uh, I've, these are user-defined properties, of course. I'm specifying uh, an application name, and then, have, uh, then I have a type, an archive path, domain targets, and then for each domain specified in the domain target list, I have targets for that domain. So this is, in this case, it's a cluster. You could have managed servers. In addition, I could also put, say, add another domain here. And then be able to deploy this to two domains um, with one of the script execution. Because it takes a, this actually takes a string array and then iterates over it. Um, to deploy each specified application to each specified domain. I also have this override properties where I could, um, I can, we can either specify the application name via the command line, or if the property is not found, then it will prompt you for the application name. Alternatively, there's this override properties that you can use to specify the domain or the applications that you want to deploy. So one other properties file that you'll see here is the JMS sender properties. Uh, when I run the example, I'm running it from the command line. So this is the working directory where it's running from. And here is where I'm specifying the endpoints for my um, different examples and the context factory to use for the different examples. So now I want to show you a quick uh, demonstration of how the examples are set up. So I'm going to call the setup example script and uh, I'll choose the SAF server example. So what this does is it's first executing the WST to configure the resources on the, on the domain that are used for this example. And now what it's going through is uh, it's deploying the, as we'll see here, the SAF server listener, uh, which is the forwarder. Uh. So here you'll see when you are doing a deployment with Ant, if your managed servers are not running, then it will say the deployment is deferred until that server becomes available. So it's not a problem. Uh, it's just unless you have cluster constraints configured, uh, cluster constraints prevent you from deploying new code unless all the managed servers are running. Um, so unless you have that enabled, your deployment will succeed um, even if your managed servers aren't running. So let's take let's scroll back through the code a bit. Um, here is where it's going through and uh, running the WLST code to configure the domain. And here's where my ant script begins to uh, deploy my code. And you'll see here, I've got the environment name and application name. Um, and those are specified as command line parameters. So let me pull it up real quick and show you. So here I'm saying um, the application name or list of names is the module name listener. So I have the SAF server listener and then the environment list is example. And then I'm saying not to prompt me for the settings. So this is the script that ran. Uh, it's calling WLST to configure the domain and then it's deploying the code for that example.